Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and I'm taking a little break from the production of my interview series, Experts Debunk the Flat Earth. Today, I wanted to just have a quick look at something that popped up in the Flat Earth community. I do keep my eye on it periodically, and if I see something that interests me, I'll have a look at it. Now, a couple of months ago, Quantum Eraser on his Ballbusters show with his buddies Nathan Oakley and several others put out a video that said gravity is not a force. Well, that's fine, so I went ahead and had a look at it. And what he did was he basically typed gravity is not a force into Google search and came up with a number of scientific papers that contained that search term. And then he would shout the search term and cite the paper claiming that somehow that paper verified what he was saying. So we're going to have a quick look at that. We're going to have a look at the intellectual honesty, or should I say dishonesty, of one Mr. Quantum Eraser. And while we're at it, he's got an underling on his show by the name of Nathan Oakley that is a rather violent individual, uh, very hot-tempered, very abusive to his guests. This apparently spreads out on the people around him. So we're going to have a few reminders of the type of person that Mr. Oakley is as well. So let's cue up the music and get going. So just to kind of get a flavor of Mr. Quantum Eraser's style and how he wants to present this, let's have a listen to his opening. Gravity is not a force. Let's just pound this in for you, okay? From Caltech, Einstein came up with the theory of general relativity in 1915, the prototype of all modern gravitational theories. Its crucial ingredient involving a colossal intellectual jump is the concept of gravitation not as a force, but as a manifestation of the curvature of space-time. Okay, so this is the very first of Quantum Eraser's sources. All right, here we go. It's from Caltech. And if you look right down here, here is his exact quote that he just used. However, let's have a look at something a little deeper. Let's have a look at this paragraph right here. Mind you, Quantum Eraser looked at this top paragraph right here, but one, two, Three paragraphs later, it clearly states that despite the great contrast between general relativity and Newtonian theory, predictions of the former approach the latter for systems in which velocities are small compared to the speed of light and gravitation potentials are weak enough that they cannot cause larger velocities. This is why we can discuss with Newtonian theory the structure of the Earth planets, stars, stellar clusters, and the gross features of motion in the solar system without fear of error. Now, in Quantum Eraser's own source, where he cherry-picked one quote that said, gravity is not a force, going down three paragraphs states very clearly that for objects that are not very massive or approaching the speed of light, Newtonian physics can clearly be used and gravity treated as a force without fear of error. This is intellectual dishonesty, and as we will see shortly, it's common practice for people in the flat earth, especially pseudo-intellectuals like Mr. Quantum Eraser. So let's proceed. This is getting fun. George Booser, 2019, see Fat the Fat Earth. Gravity is not a force but you can think of it as a force. Well, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Now, gravity is not a force, but you can indeed think of it as a force so long as you're not dealing with very massive objects or objects moving at close to the speed of light, as demonstrated very clearly by Quantum Eraser's first citation. Now, why is this important? Well, we don't use tensor calculus and field equations to design bridges, calculate the ballistics of bullets, or put satellites into space. This is all Newtonian work. 
when you're dealing with things like GPS satellites, Einstein's equations do start to become a little bit more important, and that's why we have to do what we call relativistic corrections on the GPS signal. That just increases the accuracy a little bit. Now recall, Einstein is the most accurate description we have of the thing that we call gravity. Newton made a very good description of it. However, it fell short in certain circumstances. For example, if you look at the precession of the orbit of Mercury, Newton's equations were off by something like 44 arc seconds per century. Einstein nailed it. That's the difference in detail and accuracy between the two. But I've yet to have a flat earther show me that if I drop an object from 100 feet and use Newtonian physics to calculate how long, under the influence of the acceleration of gravity, it will take to hit the ground, I have yet to find a flat earther that will tell me that he's done the math with Einstein and here's the difference between what Newton would predict and what Einstein would predict, and it's a measurable relative difference. So until they can do that, I and every other engineer in the world will continue to use Newton to solve equations like this. Now, as far as his remarks about fight the flat earth, calling him names due to his weight, that's rather unchristian-like behavior, wouldn't you think, Quantum Eraser? I thought you were a biblical literalist. Does the Bible teach you to call people names? And as far as George Mooser, he is absolutely correct, as verified by your own citation. And as far as his remark about breaking the wand of Newton, that refers to the way of looking at gravity as an unknown force, which is what Newton looked at it as, versus the bending of space-time, which gives us a lot more information about it. Einstein took out the magic of gravity, hence snapping the wand. But let's move on to the next one. Even the alma mater wiki, gravity is most accurately described by the general theory of relativity proposed by Albert Einstein in 1915, which describes gravity not as a force. And by the way, real scientific theories don't describe, they explain. All right, so as far as your little word definition games there at the end, I'm just going to pretty much ignore those. But let's go ahead and see what Wiki has to say about gravity. Well, here is Quantum Eraser's next source of information. Again, remember, all he did was type in gravity is not a force into Google and come up with citations that claim gravity is not a force. Then he just does a word search for those and cherry picks out the first sentence. And as you can see, there it is right there. Here is his sentence. However, let's look right below it. In the same paragraph. However, for most applications, gravity is well approximated by Newton's law of universal gravitation, which describes gravity as a force, which causes any two bodies to be attracted to each other with a force proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. You know, in his first citation, he was completely contradicted three paragraphs down from his cherry-picked quote. In this source, he's contradicted within the same paragraph. That's pretty weak, Quantum. Onward and upward. From the universe today, in general relativity, gravity is not a force between masses. Okay, let's go ahead and have a look at that one. I've got that one right here, too. It's from the universe today, and if we go down, we will find his quote, in general relativity, gravity is not a force between masses. Now, here's the problem that I run into. The actual title of this section is how we know that gravity is not just a force. The implication here by that word just is that gravity acts like a force, but it's a little more than that. And the article goes on to talk about the differences between Newtonian and Einsteinian gravity in these particular circumstances. Now, the reason that this was changed is that it changed the entire meaning of the article. That's why Quantum Eraser misquoted it. It's like me saying, Quantum Eraser is not a liar. 
that implies one thing. But if I say quantum eraser is not just a liar, he's a fraud, those extra words mean something. But let's go down and have a look at some of the special circumstances that this article highlights. So for example, it talks about the bending of space-time. And it also talks about the differences in the deflection of light due to gravitational lensing. And this was a difference that was highlighted in the 1919 Eddington eclipse experiment. Now, Einstein predicted that light would bend when it passed a large gravitational mass. Newton also predicted it would bend, but to a different degree. The question was, which was right? So they conducted an experiment. As it turns out, Einstein was right, Newton was not. That was the first confirmation of Einstein's theory of general relativity. He also goes on to talk about the precession of mercury and dark matter and gravitational waves. It's an interesting read and it's at a good level for people to read. I'll go ahead and put a link to this in the description. But in the meantime, let's move on. From the University of California, strictly speaking, gravity is not a force. Now, once again, here is the citation that Quantum Eraser is looking at. And as you can see, I've got his quote highlighted right here. Now, once again, in the same paragraph, it goes on to describe this subtle difference. However, states that for weak fields, the net result is the effect of propagation delay is almost exactly canceled and general relativity very nearly reproduces the Newtonian result. Once again, there is a difference between the Newtonian model of gravity and the Einsteinian model of gravity. However, unless you are dealing with extremely massive objects going at or close to the speed of light, the difference is extraordinarily subtle and you can easily use the Newtonian physics to describe the world around you. Just as simple as that. Once again, a cherry-picked quote with key features left out from the same citation, and again, in this case, from the exact same paragraph. This is intellectual dishonesty. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a lot of fun here. So let's go ahead and see his next citation and see what he's misquoting now. From physics.org, according to this theory, gravity is not a force. Well, physics.org have we? Let's have a look. Well, once again, we have another one of Quantum Eraser's citation, this one from physics.org. How strong is the force of gravity on Earth? Notice anything in that title? Is there a word being used? But let's go down and find his cherry pick quote. There it is. Now, this is the standard definition of what Einsteinian gravity is. It's been used several times already from different sources, but let's look at a little further down. How about two paragraphs down? For most applications though, gravity is best explained by Newton's law of universal gravitation, which states that gravity exists as an attraction between two bodies. Once again, your own citation contradicts you, Quantum. Want to try again? Well, let's go ahead and close this up with the words of Dr. Albert Einstein himself. This is a letter to the London Times dated November 28th, 1919. Let's go ahead and have a look at it. I'll have a link to this in the description, by the way. Here's the paragraph I'm interested in. Let's go see what Dr. Einstein said about Newton himself. The new theory of gravitation diverges considerably as regard to principles from Newton's theory, but its practical results agree so nearly with those of Newton's theory that it is difficult to find criteria for distinguishing them, which are accessible to experience. And then he goes on to list some of the special conditions where his theory is a little better than Newton's. But in the end, let's just make it very clear. Let no one suppose, however, that the mighty work of Newton can really be superseded. You like that word, Anthony? Superseded? 
by this or any other theory. His great and lucid ideas will retain their unique significance for all time as the foundation of our whole modern conceptual structure in the sphere of natural philosophy. Einstein himself clearly says that his theories do not supersede those of Newton. He built his theories on Newton and others. And as mentioned again, but its practical results agree so nearly to those of Newton's theory that it is difficult to find criteria for distinguishing them. That's because in weak fields, Newton's calculations drop out of Einstein's field calculations. They are indistinguishable and we can freely use Newton without fear of error. So, one word to the wise quantum eraser and Gilligan for that matter. If you're gonna play with the big dogs, bring a bone. If not, stay under the porch where you belong. Folks, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again for stopping by. This was a lot of fun and a little different. Make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down there. I'd like to have you on Team Bob. And remember, on Monday, we're starting our Experts Debunk the Flat Earth series. Take care, guys.